What's up guys, War here, welcome back to the channel. So today we are gonna talk about the Diablo 4 campfire chat that they just finished. There is no patch notes just to get that out of the way, but I do wanna kinda of go over and kind of recap everything that they kinda of went over in this hour dev stream. Um, there's a lot to unpack, so there's a lot of stuff going on with the season seven as well as the PTR. So let's go ahead and get right into this. So there is a bunch of class balancing here. There's a bunch of it going on. There's stuff for each individual class, which I think is really, really great. There's stuff for Barbarian here for Walking Arsenal. And you can kind of see some of the earthquake and some of these um, increases here. This is really neat. Firebolt enchantment for Sorceress got completely nerfed. This is way worse, um, but this is in there. Devouring Blaze also got super nerfed. This is really bad. Um, however, the ball lighting updates are actually really good. These are very nice ball lighting updates. I really wish if the devs do see this video, why can't, why do you guys hate the sorceress so much? Why can't you guys give the sorceress two buffs in this thing? This should be like ball lighting deals, 30% increased damage to stun enemies and something else because every other class seems to get that. If you go back here, like they get multiple things like it damages enemies and then it also does something else. I don't understand why the devs hate sorceress so much but hopefully in the future that can get changed. The Sorceress does have a cool unique now. They keep bringing us uh, really cool uniques and inspiring ideas here. So Ball Lightning can just kind of basically just be bolder from the Druid. Um, but there is a combination that you're gonna be able to do this with some other stuff later, which I think is really unique and cool. Uh, they kind of showcase some of the Ball Lightning and um, this, is, this unique is actually really nice. It allows you to cast Ball Lightning while moving. So you don't actually have to stop to cast ball lightning. So it should make ball lightning feel much, much better, which I think is really, really cool. Um, and it's going to do some impactful damage. I wish I like the double stuff here. We would just get these on our skills for sorceress. Um, it's kind of what drove me away from the class altogether because it just continuously got nerfed. But Druid, uh, there's a lot of cool stuff with Druid. There's a lot of stuff with uh, Rage, Raging Shred, which is a nice buff. Um, Boulder got buffed, which is cool. Uh, Initiate Blood Howl. Again, same thing here. Uh, generate 20 spirit but now it also generates plus something else i don't know why these are getting buffed for like two things two things two things and the sorceress just gets one thing or it's a nerf so i, I don't understand why they continuously do that um but anyway uh shred looks really cool here which is really nice it kind of shreds a bunch of stuff aspect of uh wolf's rain which is really cool uh casting hurricane also spawns smaller hurricanes on your wolves i think this is really great for companion builds that looks like it's going to be a lot of fun um shadow clones for rogue got updated so now not only they're going to be stronger in dealing more damage uh to what your character is it also is going to apply buffs from certain abilities that you're using so for example uh your shadow clone as well as druid companions or minions can proc on a crit strike the wind striker aspect or other aspects that you're going to have equipped on your character which i think is cool so if you don't potentially crit strike and your shadow clone does then it'll still grant you this movement speed power which i do think is really really cool um needed to be buffed uh rogue got some really nice boots here um so mobility skills are always imbued and when they uh when you hit in a damaging elite or boss will cause an explosion. I think this is really, really cool for the rogue. I really think this is nice. Um, just for all you rogue mains out there, they did not do anything different with uh, Dance of Knives, so very disappointing, or at least in this showcase. Hopefully in the patch notes, we'll get something. Um, but rogue got a really nice, cool thing. A huge one is the Caltrops. Jump back has been removed, so you can just run around and kind of just throw Caltrops on the ground. It's gonna make feeling playing those builds that use it much better. Um, we also have some stuff for Necromancer here, some really nice Blood Wave pants. Kind of brings everything in, which is pretty unique and cool. Um, and then you have a Blood Spear, which is really nice here. You kind of throw the Blood Spear and it kind of bounces back. So it's kind of like having the Bone Skill just changed to Blood, which is kind of nice, or Bone Spear, which is really cool. Now, this is probably the biggest one. Spearborn God took a huge hit here. So the Rod of Kep got hugely nerfed. Okay, not only did the the velocity change to Vigorous, but it's not only reduced damage, so they changed that to free to cast, but the crit strike has been reduced all the way to half a percent instead of up to 3%. So severely nerfed here for uh, Spiritborn. Um, I thought about like this, like, like did they need to nerf the Rod 
And was that the reason that Spearborn was so strong? Or was it because Spearborn had so many bugs that made it strong? So I don't know. Maybe they had already tested fixing the bugs and then saw that Rod of Kep was too strong. If that's the case, then this nerf is warranted. If it's not and it was the bugs, then when this fully releases, Spearborn's going to feel even worse. Um, so that, that got changed. <clears throat> some more gameplay updates and some bonuses here, which is really nice for the for the uh, for other classes. Some ultimate updates here, which is really nice if you guys want to take a look at that. Uh, new rune words. Okay, so they changed how rune words work just slightly with the overflow part of the um, mechanic here. So the runes kind of overflow a little bit different, and now you can store them and all this stuff. So it's basically kind of like you'll get one big burst of damage instead of consistent damage increase or consistent whatever your power is. It'll kind of just happen once, and then it'll be a long time before it happens again. <clears throat> they basically added a bunch of cooldowns to rituals and how they work which we all love more cooldowns in this game um next we have our seasonal theme which is the main portion of this that i kind of want to talk about so they are introducing witchcrafting okay so witchcrafting is going to be the brand new mechanic and here it is so i gotta give blizzard points for going back to and actually having a seasonal theme we haven't had one since season two so it's been nice that we're going to get one however uh this is the copy paste of season two if you guys remember we had season two vampiric powers you had a graph just like this with a bunch of different vampiric powers that you could use and this is a copy paste of that and changed it into witchcraft so Although I give them points for actually giving us a theme and going to a more power-based theme, so we actually have one, huge negative points for just copying, pasting Season 2 um, of the Vampire, the Vampiric Powers, and just changing it to Witchcraft. So huge, huge, huge negative points there for Blizzard. Uh, very disappointed that this is in here. Um, I, you know, all these powers do seem cool, but it is a direct copy-paste of Season 2. Um, they are going to be bringing back the uh, Resplendent Spark. So in here, normally when you finish this, you would get a Resplendent Spark. They took that away this season on Vessel of Hatred. It is now back, which is great. So big points there. Um, they do give a display of some of these powers in here, which I do think are pretty cool. The Prawn NATO is back from Diablo 3 for all my Witch Doctors out there, which is kind of nice. Um, so now... In addition to copy pasting the vampiric powers, they also copy pasted uh, the member the vampiric tides or the vamp tides we called them. So now they're called head hunts. The whispers are intended. These sub zones uh, takeovers are like hell tides. So they copy pasted the vampiric powers. They copy pasted uh, the vamp tides and. It, again, huge negative points here. Huge negative points when we're getting the same stuff again on top of the same Christmas uh, same Christmas event that we had a year ago. So very, very disappointing. Um, oh, and on top of that, now we have Occultist Gems. This is in addition. So these gems can be inserted into your gem slots. They're going to give armor and resistance to all of your elements, and they all have powers that you can get. Uh, this is basically a clear cut and copy of season one with the malignant hearts, putting malignant hearts in here. Although it doesn't do anything to your direct skills or change them, it's very similar to where it's just going to buff or add things in here. So I know there is the witch theme with the hexes and auras, but it is a direct copy paste of season one and season two. So very disappointing there. Um, next, there's a huge tree of whispers update. They changed the town. They're adding a Raven of the Tree, which means that when you're out farming and doing these completions, you can get all of your uh, Whisper reward like uh, marks. And then this Raven Tree, you can turn into the Tree of Whispers as opposed to having to portal back to the Tree of Whispers. In addition, there is Ancestral Caches, which can give you an Ancestral Unique, which is or not unique, but item, which is fantastic. Very low drop rate, but it is in there. Next, the Paragon Migration. So for all, this is a huge, this is probably the biggest uh, plus in this update, at least going into the PTR. 
So your Paragon will work just like Diablo 3. When the season ends, all of your Paragon experience will be transferred to the Eternal Realm. So those cosmetics, which is the Soul Stone as well as the uh, the Soul Stone as well as that cow outfit for your mount, that is a uh, you get that reward when you hit 300 Paragon. However, that is the only reward. It's not going to change season by season. So if you continue to play multiple season and your XP gets all the way to Eternal and you eventually get to 300, you will get those rewards. Huge dub there. Very nice. Also, Ancestral Items will have a huge drop rate at the top end for Aspects. So this whole season, I think I had like maybe 10 or 12 Aspects actually maxed. Um, now, when you get an Ancestral Item, it'll have the higher end a cap of those powers so you can try to max it out it won't be maxed every time but if there is a gap of like five percent you know you can get three more percent on top of that it just gives you that chance to get it max also the uh, ancestral items will have a increased drop rate uh very very cool uh, next that i want to talk about which is probably the biggest thing the armory is finally here we will have the armory inside the PTR, and it looks like it is coming for Season 7, which is probably the biggest thing uh, that everybody's been looking forward to. So you can save, you can name them. All of your armory slots are character bound. Changing between different loadouts, so between these different slots, is free. It does not cost anything, which is a huge dub. I was actually kind of expecting them to make that cost like 5 million gold to swap between your stuff, but I'm glad they did no cost. Um, the armory is accessible through uh, the sanctuary, the citadel, the tree of whispers, and training areas. So very, very fantastic. We're finally getting the armory. This should have been here a long time ago, but I'm glad that it's finally going to be here. Um, and outside of that, guys, they go into some Q&A. So the PCR will be able to have a copy of your character if you want to do that, but it is there. So overall, you know... Um, it's cool that we're getting the Paragon progression that's going to just be migrating constantly and constantly going up until you hit 300, which is great, and then the Armory. But I will say, man, I am I am excited to see what I can do with the Witchcraft powers. However, I am very disappointed that we are literally having a carbon copy of Season 1 and Season 2 with no innovation there. Yes, I know that the, witch, the Witchcraft powers are separate, but... You know, they're different than Empiric Powers, but it's a copy-paste. It's nothing new, and that, to me, is very disappointing on top of the recent events that we've had with Blizzard and Diablo 4. So, outside of that, guys, like the video, comment down below. Let me know what you guys think of this recap if you didn't watch it, and let me know what you're most excited about coming to the PTR. Uh, and don't forget to subscribe, guys, as always. Stay gaming. I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.